Hello, I'm taking on a challenge to beat every playable Nintendo published game. Welcome to the next episode. The next game is Hellifire. Finally, we're back to the arcades. This time, Nintendo made another game involving shooting waves of enemies, but hey, at least it's not another space game. It may not be a clone of Space Invaders this time around, but this one does bear a strong resemblance to Titus Polaris, released the same year. I couldn't find the exact release date of Polaris, so I'm not exactly sure if this one is a total ripoff, but knowing Nintendo's history up until this point, I wouldn't totally put it past them. The flyer for this game boasts an exciting battle between new type submarine and hard-hitting rocket and bomb-equipped helicopters. It also gives us a clue on what the goal for this game should be. When required number of helicopters destroyed, submarine surfaces. Native girl dancing on island board submarine. Extra points. Oh boy, what on earth will that look like? I guess there's only one way to find out. The main idea behind this one was to create something similar to Space Invaders, but to advance the movement possibilities beyond just left and right. To accomplish this, they place the player in a submarine. Half of the screen is water, and the other half is sky. The submarine you control can move in all eight directions. However, you must stay in the water. The primary objective is to destroy helicopters that fly in the skies above the water. In addition to the missiles fired by the helicopters, there are tons of hazards in the water you have to dodge too. Dodging these hazards is a key mechanic in this game, and if you just focus on destroying the choppers, you won't make it far. In particular, there's one type of attack where the helicopters drop something into the water that fires a ton of horizontal shots, and the window you have to dodge this attack is really tight. I died a lot to this move. Speaking of, I can't tell if the death animation is supposed to be just an explosion or something more gory. An explosion makes more sense, since they're controlling a machine, but it just doesn't totally look like one. There are four waves of helicopters you have to destroy to complete each level, and they get faster with each wave. In the first three waves, the helicopters just fly by slowly across the screen. These ones are relatively easy to destroy, since their consistent pattern makes them easy to hit. The last wave of helicopters is much more difficult. They move quickly and have more sporadic movement patterns. To balance this, there are much less helicopters during this wave. On my first attempt, I made it through level 1, and the next level immediately started. Guess you have to beat more than one level to see the island girl. Unfortunately, I died before beating level 2, and I was so close with only a few more enemies left in the last wave. For my second attempt, I cranked up the lives from 3 to 6. This didn't end up doing me any good though, and I got destroyed by the last helicopter in level 1. Didn't even make it as far this time. The combination of the quick movement patterns and that one move that was really hard to dodge makes the fourth wave of each level really tough. My third attempt went a lot better, and I managed to beat level 2. Still no island girl though. Does she even exist? Surely she'd show up after level 3, right? Unfortunately, I wasn't able to beat level 3 on this run, and I died once again during the last wave. My fourth one made it to level 3 as well, but I didn't even get past the third wave this time. Finally, in my fifth run, I managed to destroy the last helicopter just as the near impossible to dodge move was closing in on me. As I'd been suspecting, this indeed was the last level you needed to beat to see the ending cutscene with the island girl. And boy was hit something. The low pixel island girl floats by in the sky while a happy jingle plays on loop. The submarine docks on the island, and she hops in. Due to the amount of points she gives you, I got an extra life, and we joked that this meant she was drafted into the battle. This cutscene was hilariously simple and anticlimactic, and I got a pretty good laugh out of it. Was it worth going through these three levels to see? I think so, but probably not for the reason the designers intended. Oh, and for some reason, the song kept playing for a while into level 4. Guess they didn't bother to actually end the song at the right time. After this, I decided to keep going, and I made it past level 4 this time too. Finally, during the last wave of level 5 though, I died and the run was finished. I think getting to the island girl was the best ending I was going to get, so I decided to finish here. Game complete. On to the review. While I like the idea behind giving you more movement options, I don't think this one was executed particularly well. While I did like having more obstacles to dodge, that one particular move was just way too disproportionately difficult. It also has a similar problem as Space Firebird, where some of the enemies felt a little too difficult to hit, although it wasn't quite as bad here. I could probably get better at the aiming, given more time. There's still some basic level of fun to be had, but like many of the high score chasers, I wasn't able to stay interested in it for too long, resulting in a score of 5 out of 10.